In chapter two, we learned how to work with formulas and functions. We worked with relative and absolute cell addresses. We work with inserting functions using the insert function command. We also work with basic math and statistical functions such as the min, max, count, and average functions. We work with date functions. We also work with the if function to determine a specific result based on the criteria that we provide. We work with the lookup and the lookup functions, the PMT function, to arrive at a specific payment based on the data that we provide. We worked on creating and maintaining range names and even using those range names in formulas. It is important that you read the white pages in Chapter 2 in addition to working with and watching the hands-on videos that are in the Chapter Videos module covering the concepts and commands presented in the chapter. Let's take a look at the Mortgage Calculator Project, Chapter 2, Project 1. You should have downloaded your set of instructions that tell you exactly what to do and you should have of course read the project description. There are a total of 17 steps in this exercise. This is the grader project file E02 underscore grader underscore H3 is the name of the Excel spreadsheet that we're working with for this exercise. Your textbook contains a picture of the actual results for this exercise. Let's see what page is that? Page 207. In your textbook shows the results that you should achieve once you enter the formulas in the yellow boxes in the F column. Of course we will use formulas and functions to achieve the results and not type the results directly into the sales. So back to the exercise and looking at the instructions, step number two, you're just to, to assign the range name table to the range A17 through C20. So the first thing you do is select the range A17 through C20 and then uh, pro using the command give it a name and name it table. And this is the range, A17 through C20. It automatically populated because we selected it before entering the command. Step 3, in cell 4, F4, in cell F4, enter a lookup function to calculate the APR. And this is based on the credit rating. And so in, you want to include the range lookup argument to ensure an exact match and use range names for the first two arguments in the function. This function we will use the VLOOKUP function. So I'm clicking in cell L4, click insert function, and then type, well, here's VLOOKUP, and now I'll select a function box. But if we if it wasn't there, we could type VLOOKUP, click go shows up in the list and then click OK and we get all of the arguments that are required for the VLOOKUP function. Well the first thing you want to do is provide the lookup value. The lookup value is what we are asking Excel to look up in the VLOOKUP function and the lookup value is the credit rating. The credit rating is in cell C7. So we click C7, credit rating, which is the range name for that sale, is placed in the argument for lookup value. The next value is the table array. The table array is the set of data that we are going to search for the lookup value in. And in this case, the table array sells A17 through C20, which we defined as 
the name table. The next argument is the column index. The column index number is the column in the table that we will return the matching value from. In this case, the index value is 3. So whatever credit rating we find, we will return whatever appears in column 3. We want to ensure an exact match. So to find an exact match, the value for range lookup should be false. We click OK, and our value should be 3.25%. You may check the value on page 207 to make sure that it is correct. Step 4. In cell F5, we want to enter a lookup function and calculate the minimum down payment required amount. We want to include the range lookup argument to ensure an exact match. Use the range names for the first two arguments in the function as opposed to using the cell addresses. We'll use the range names. And uh, they gave an example. So if a borrower has an excellent credit rating and is, and is required to pay a minimum of a 5% down payment of the purchase price, uh, you want to multiply the function results by the negotiated cost of the house. So whatever the value of the B lookup is, we want to multiply that by the cost of the house to get the minimum down payment required. Back to the spreadsheet in cell F5. We're working with the B lookup function again. We have the B lookup values. The um, the lookup value in this case is credit rating again. The table array is table. The index column number that we are returning in this case is the down payment. So that would be column two. And we also want to ensure an exact match. So we have a down payment percentage here, 0 0.05. So to, de to determine the minimum down payment required, we need to multiply this amount, this value by cost. And cost is in cell C4, which is the negotiated cost of the house. And the value should be 18750 Now for um, step five in cell F6, you want to enter a formula to calculate the annual property tax based on the negotiated cost of the house and the annual property tax rate. And we want to use range names in the formula. This is a very straightforward formula. A lot of you missed this one on the project because you did not use range names in the formula. So this should actually be equal cost which is in cell C4, times the property tax rate. Property tax rate is in cell C10. Oops, nope, nope, not right. Okay. Correct answer, yes, $2,812.50. Moving on to the annual PMI, which is in step six. Nope. Actually, the next step, step six, works with cell F10, the total down payment. So we are entering a formula to calculate the total down payment, which is the sum of the required minimum payment Well, since cell L5, and any additional down payment entered in the input section. Additional down payment in cell C5. And we want to use range names in the formula. 
So to compute this, this would be equal the minimum down payment, which is what's in cell F, 5 plus any additional down payment, which is in cell C5, which should give us a total of 23750 Now for cell F11, which is step 7, we want to enter the formula to calculate the amount of the loan, which is the difference between the negotiated cost of the house and the total down payment. So for this function, using range names again, the cost of the house minus the total down payment, which is what we computed in cell F10. The amount of the loan should be $351,250. All right, next we're working with step eight. Step eight was missed by many of you. Here we are using an if function to determine the annual PMI. Not all borrowers are required to pay PMI. It depends on the percentage of the down payment. If the percentage of the down payment is 20% or more, then the borrower does not pay PMI. The function will then return the value of zero as the result. On the other hand, or else, if the percentage of the down payment is less than 20%, then the function calculates the PMI, which is the amount of the loan multiplied by the PMI rate. Of course, we will use range names in this function. So in cell F7, we use the insert function command. The logical test argument should consist of the total down payment, which is what's in cell F10. We want to test to see if it is greater than or equal to the avoid PMI rate times the actual cost of the house. If the value is true, then we want to return the value of zero, meaning that the borrower will not be required to pay PMI, which stands for private mortgage insurance. If the result is false, then we want to multiply the loan amount which is 351,000 in cell F11, the loan amount times the PMI rate. Oops. Let me try that again. The loan amount times, I forgot the star, the PMI rate. Okay, so the annual PMI should be $1,756.25. That is the correct answer. Moving on to step nine. In step nine, we are calculating the payment, the monthly payment using the PMT function. The monthly payment goes in cell F12. Using the insert function command, PMT is selected. If not, you can search for it up here. Click OK. Now we have the arguments that are required for the PMT function. The rate consists of the APR, which is in cell L4, divided by the number of months, which is in cell C14. The next argument of the function is the NPR. NPR is the total number of payments for the loan. The total number of payments for the loan is the number of years divided by the number of payments, which would be months. So it's years time the number of payments, which in this case gives us 360, so we know we're on the right track. And PV is the present value of the loan, which in this case is in cell F11. And in order to make the 
result that is returned from the function appear positive, we need to make we need to um, add a negative sign right in front of the loan argument. So our monthly payment is one thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars and sixty-six cents. We take what's in cell F6, the annual property tax rate, and we divide that by the number of payments per year, which is months, which will give us $234.38. Step 11, since cell F14, in step 11, we are to calculate the monthly PMI, which is based on the annual amount. Again, we're using range names in the formula. So this is PMI, since cell F7 divided by the number of payments per year or months. And our monthly PMI is $146.35. Next in cell F15, step 12, we are determining the total monthly payment. And the total monthly payment consists of adding together the monthly principal and interest along with the monthly property tax and the monthly PMI. This, this auto sum function sums too much. So just readjust the range to sum in this function. And the total monthly payment should be $1,909.39. Okay, the last step, step 13, they gave people problems. In cell F16, we will enter the E-date function to calculate the date of the last payment. The function second argument must calculate the correct number of months based on the total length of the loan. For example, if the first payment is due May 1st, 2016, the final payment is due April 1st, 2046 for a 30-year loan. The last argument of the function, we must subtract one to ensure that the last payment date is correct. Go to its function, E date is selected. The start date is the first date, date of first payment, which is in cell C6. The months is the number of months before or after the start date, and this will be calculated by entering the total number of years times the number of payments per year, which is 12. And remember, we must subtract one from the month's argument to get the correct result. In this case, April 1st, 2046. Okay, I hope that this was helpful for you. If you completed project one from chapter two and your score was less than 90, I strongly encourage you to view the sections of this video that you need in order to make your corrections and submit your project again in my IT lab for a better grade. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for watching.